I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic again. Another map of Land of Fire, but this time with Kleber, and we're gonna see how this strategy actually plays out. Before we get in, like, subscribe button below. Appreciate all the support and this, uh, the community and the builders of the channel. Appreciate it that you guys are uh, putting the comments below, making this place a better place, and building a better community, and uh, learning something at it at the same time. So let's get right to it. This time we're in Kleber, and now again. Why I like Kleber so much, especially with the new legendary upgrade, allows you to be that more sneakier, stealthier destroyer with the same firepower and devastation that the Kleber provides. And it definitely is a game changer in my personal opinion, especially when you're able to run around the map all over the place, quick reaction force kind of style, but also being able to sneak up on destroyers unsuspectingly and as well as use your torpedoes as you're going to see the whole gamut today with the Kleber. And it's pretty, pretty awesome. So what's the basic strategy at uh, this one right here? Uh, what we're going to have do is have the Clebera, me, uh, push in Charlie Cap super hard, super fast. And we're just going to use that stealthy ability and also the gun power uh, that allows the Clebera to shine. Unfortunately, with the legendary upgrade, it does reduce your gun power, your DPM by half. So uh, we could do the best we have with the engine, uh, re sorry, the uh, gun reload booster, as you can see right here. It helps out a little bit. But again, the really bread and butter of this thing is the torpedo reload and also the stealth capabilities of the 6.2 concealment, giving your ability to really be a devastating force on the battlefield. Meanwhile, we have our destroyer player over here. Where the gearing is going to go stealthily attack Bravo. Meanwhile, pushing up with three other ships. So we're going to have the uh, cruisers uh, push with the um, gearing as well as the battleship push up as well. And we're going to take the fight to the enemy at Alpha. But we're actually going to see this is the title of the video is actually a comeback from a loss because we thought we were going to lose this one bad because what you're going to see is the enemy team has two Napoli's on the eastern side here and it really becomes a very uh, devastating thing, especially when you have two Napoli's pushing through on the eastern side and then you're going to see the battleship and the destroyer player are going to actually be trying to contest it and we're going to actually it's almost overwhelming uh, that the ability what they were able to do I think they pushed a little bit heavy on this side. Meanwhile, they had two ships going out in the outer flank, keeping our team at bay and kind of doing this delayed retreat, if you will. Um, it, in essence, it is smart because what they're doing is drawing our team into a, a friendly fire or sorry, a crossfire situation because you could have the enemy team shooting across right into our team if we decide to push into Alpha. And it actually turns out to be very uh, devastating for some of these broadside cruisers and maybe battleships. And actually, it draws us a little bit out too, too far. But what I do like about it, if we do win this side, we do get to encircle Alpha and come back and, and contest Charlie again. And this is kind of what actually happened where we actually take one of their ships down, maybe all of them. And then in turns, we can overwhelm and take Alpha. And this is the cool thing about communication is we actually have our uh, the, the ships over here at Charlie do take significant loss so we're going to have to do a full retreat turn back around and head and guard uh, back bravo so you're going to see majority of our ships will push back to bravo and me and, me and the club air also with its speed is able to rush back through bravo and kind of encircle it and come back and if we need it go back to charlie as well so it's giving you multiple options of the fast destroyer like clubera marceau and you're going to see actually because we do a delayed withdrawal back we hold off and we hold bravo which then means that the enemy team has to come through somewhere and that's the one thing I, the downside i do see about charlie is that you're trying to push through these little gaps right here and it's just susceptible you to uh, enemy fire through all types of angles very very difficult to come back and cap meanwhile our team has overwhelming force at Bravo and overwhelming force that we can shoot back at choke points and as well as come back to Bravo with like just these little spots right here to cap. I mean, we can come back here and cap Bravo. If I need to go back to Alpha, I can cap Alpha. And it's look, I'm just going back and forth these two areas, which gives me a very good advantage because I'm not driving across the map to Charlie or I'm not driving across the map to, from Charlie to Bravo. It's very, very difficult to defend Charlie and then try to take a point like Alpha and Bravo if your team is in communication and coordination. So, so it's actually an awesome comeback. I hope you enjoy it. Take a look at the video and let's see how it goes. All right, team. Here we are on the replay of Club Bear on the map, Land of Fire. And here we go. First initial position again going for the Club Bear to contest to Charlie. 
Meanwhile, we have the gearing and we're going to do a heavy push alpha, then, or sorry, Bravo, then up to alpha. We have a St. Vincent and Des Moines supporting us at Charlie. Notice, I, again, I have RPF because it's really, really great to have situational awareness of the battlefield and know where to go because at the higher leagues, I'm now noticing that it's not just about gunpowder firepower. I'm not the one that's supposed to be shooting all the time and trying to, you know, get spotted all the time. I'm sometimes there to spot. Uh, keep the destroyers at bay or even torp and do what I need to do. I mean, also provide in intelligence and information to the rest of my team, which again, that RPF is very, very powerful in that regard. Notice we have the vampire, which I'm not going to pick a fight with. He has the five kilometer hydro as well as heavy DPM and gunpowder power and he outspots me. So I'm not going to really play and pick a fight with him uh, because he could easily pop smoke and use his hydro to spot me and kill me. So I'm not going to waste my HP on that. So, again, it's not, there's nothing wrong with you tactically retreating or what I like to call uh, repositioning. Uh, retreating is uh, okay. It's really you just have to really assess the battlefield, analyze the situation, and figure out, hey, where is the best uh, use of my ship at this point and moment of the game? It's not about who caps first. It's about who can hold the longest and survive the longest, right? Notice we are dodging depth charge. Ooh, and we take unnecessary damage right there. I hate these damn things. But, again, drop as many depth charges as you can uh, just to get these things out of the way. And you got to really, I mean, I notice it really makes an impact because my eyes are not focused on the battlefield right now. I'm focused on not trying to kill myself in these minefields. So, again, I'm tr just cr trying to just get weave in and out of these things. And you can see what they look like. I'm just trying to literally dodge and uh, depth charge as many as I can and get them out of the way. Again, BB players and just, uh, cruiser players, if you see these and your destroyers in, uh, under heavy uh, minefields drop your sw on it and it helps uh, eliminate a lot of it to help your dd player out meanwhile we're going to continue torping again i like the legendary upgrade of the uh, club bear giving me that 6.2 concealment not being spotted and allowing myself to try to at least torps and do some kind of damage we're now we're in a full tactical retreat or I like to say repositioning uh, so that we can somehow draw them out of Charlie and reassess and re-engage at a different time of our choosing because right now two Napoli's pushing is very, very difficult and it's proving very difficult to kill even with the St. Vincent and the Des Moines and we have to just survive and save as much AP as we can. Notice I'm firing torpedoes uh, while they're trying to push in. Again, it is helping slow down their advance. And uh, I'm just going to take a while, you know, since I got full health right here, why not take some shots at the Napoli? And just notice how fast their secondaries just all of a sudden swing onto you. As a destroyer player, you are the juiciest target on the battlefield, and I like that. I kind of want to know that I'm the most, uh, I would say, feared after and sought after target to shoot at because it's just a juicy thing to see a, a destroyer player being shot. Look at that. All Napoli's firing every single thing. I think they had focus fire or something activated as their consumable because every one of their shots seemed to just be at more concentrated and nailed even worse and we have another guy shooting us from smoke and we're getting shot from cecilia secondaries napoli secondaries two of them by the way and these sap secondaries are just utterly brutal and uh, i just had to disengage hit the speed boost engine boost out of there full throttle egress the area and just re uh and analyze and pick a better battle at our choosing right now man this is the devastating the amount of sap secondaries we took right there look at look at the potential damage i took right there Seven hundred seventy-six thousand potential damage being shot at me right there that is redonkulous right there. We lose our St. Vincent, uh, unfortunately, and uh, but we're going to go ahead and avenge his death. We're going to take a nice torpedo shot here within 8 kilometers. Now, the range on the Clubair torpedoes are not very long. They're only 8 kilometers, but with this extra concealment that m for me to be able to draw in that close and get a little bit more accurate shot... It pays off in the long run. I like it a lot. And these these torpedoes hit with a punch. I'm talking about they provide so much damage, and they are pretty quick and uh, decently stealthy, but just enough where the battleship or cruiser player just cannot uh, maneuver and avoid. And take a look at this shot right now. Just look. One, two, three, four, five, six. And boom. Splash one. Six torpedoes right into the Sicilia. And that is enough to take him out right there. And that bumps us up to 67,000 damage right there. And we are now still egressing. Now, hopefully that battleship, we exchange one for one. Ooh, we get another torpedo here, right? A lucky one. And that exchange right there was just enough to allow us to get back in the game. We notice we're down by 100 and so points. But we're now holding Bravo. While hopefully our team at Alpha can continue to push and take out their Ohio. That is another good win for us right there. Notice that they are now down three ships to our our uh five or six and we have to take this pesky uh, vampire out again i'm not going to press him because he can outgun me and, and dpm me with his hydro and uh, dpm because my legendary upgrade reduces my reload ability so i'm not going to play with that i don't have my uh, reload booster active as well or it's still down cooldown so again i have to choose my battles wisely 
keeping that RPF up there shows me, hey, where's this vampire at? So I can keep him uh, at, in, in my gun field of view. Uh, having all my guns pointed in that direction, ready to go, is great situational awareness rather than me pointing it in a wrong direction and not knowing where this vampire is at. Notice that we were able to keep him out of Bravo Cap as well. We're calling for uh, reinforcements from Alpha. They're keeping their destroyer at bay. Meanwhile, our Garing is going to go ahead and press to Charlie and cap Charlie just in case we don't have enough points to get this. And that actually will help us seal the deal and win the game right there. And the Vampire being spotted by the Moscow Radar. And he is taking shots around. Now he knows what it feels like to be radar and spotted. And he's taking the brute damage. And we're going to shoot. And boom, look at that. Eight hits with a fire. And that takes a lot, a lot of damage off of the vampire right there. It's very crucial and important later in the game. Because, man, you, a vampire doesn't have heals. And if you don't have heals in the late uh, run of the game, it is very, very hard to come back. We've got our reload booster ready to go. Clavera's guns hit with a punch and with a power. And I'm telling you, it's really awesome when we have this reload booster going. So it makes up for the loss for the uh, the concealment. But you know what? It's worth it in my personal opinion because in these situations right here, I don't need DPM gunpowder. I just need the right shot at the right time to just win the game. Notice I'm still spotting where that vampire is. It looks like he's running away, backing out. I'm not going to fire right now, waiting for the, um, the vampire to show up because the Napoli would uh, kind of melt me alive here. Meanwhile, we got our Des Moines holding the uh, the other Napoli at bay out there. He, he's way out there, out there, not making any difference. Can't cap, can't do anything. Meanwhile, his other buddy Napoli is taking a lot of fire while we're continuously spotting. And we're keeping this vampire in front of us, making sure that he doesn't take this cap or take advantage of us or torp us or do whatever. So let's see if we can do it. Alpha's already secured. Got your gearing taken, Charlie. So we don't have to push aggressive right now. We can kind of slow roll it, see where this develops. And we still kind of win the game based on points. So again, it's always knowing when to throttle back, when to push back, not to overwin too much. And here we go. We're spotted. Yep, there he goes. We know he's out of the smoke right there. We didn't unleash the reload booster and keep him spotted as much as we can. Last shot right here. Oh, he's only on 241. That is just enough for our shells to do enough damage. And boom, splash two. And that takes game right there and that is how we win in the comeback at the late game right there and really really awesome power of the club Air and the rest of our team right there hope you guys like the video let me know in your comments below what you think and what strategies you've seen in land of fire with club Air or any other ship that is hope you guys enjoy it as always let me know and um thank you for supporting the channel like subscribe button below at 4,000 subs doing another premium giveaway and the bill will be at the end of the screen as always hope you guys are doing well make sure you say hi when you see me out there and you guys take care cheers yeah, Stalingrad and the um, Napoli, one of the Napolis, we're both 57. Yeah, so 55, 57, 57, 52, 60. That's a pretty good win. Yep.